Math 43, I had a question coming out of chapter 6, number 77. And here we were given some information about four-year-olds in China and how many hours a day they spend unsupervised. So we were told that they spend an average of three hours a day unsupervised with a standard deviation of 1.5. And then they also told, told us that, that that data was normally distributed. All right, so our variable here, you can see it in part A, it's the amount of time that these four-year-olds spend unsupervised, and they gave us the units in hours, and here's our distribution, right? So with that, with the distribution that I'm writing for part B, uh, I'm going to highlight this in yellow, all right? So the N tells us to make the bell curve here, the 3 tells us to put 3 under the peak, and the 1.5 helps us scale it. So if I wanted to scale it, and I'm going to erase all this in a moment, but if I wanted to scale this axis, because we typically have three deviations above and three deviations below, I would use the 1.5 to help me scale it. So I just keep adding 1.5 to get the three deviations above, and I would subtract 1.5 to get the deviations below. And again, just to connect this one more time, if I had made these into z-scores, it's always z-score 0, 1, 2, 3, negative one, negative two, negative three. Okay, now I don't have to put all of those numbers on there, I just want you to see it play out, because the more we see it, the more we remember it and hopefully understand it. Okay, so moving through here, the first part, or, or the first probability they ask us to calculate is what's the probability that a child spends less than one day unsupervised? So I'm gonna take that less than one and I'm gonna write it up literally as x less than one. And I'm going to take this symbol and I'm going to find one on the x-axis. And because I'm less than, I'm going to go left. And I'm going to end that. Oops, let me get the purple back up. I'm going to have a low of negative infinity and a high of 1. So that's where you see low, high, and then mean standard deviation. And again, because I'm on a normal curve, I'm using normal CDF. So I've got that probability. And just looking at the proportion of area I shaded, it's definitely less than half. I think it's less than 20%, and the number that we get back out is about 9%, and that seems to match my graph. I'm happy with that. So there's part C. Part D says, what percent of children spend over 10 hours? Well, if we start to think about over 10 hours, right, I'm going to show us again that I have this, this graph here, right? I've got my x variable labeled, scaled. I've got the y-axis labeled. I've got three under the peak. But keep in mind, our deviation was 1.5. So imagine we go here again, 4.5, 6, 7.5. You can feel 10 is pretty far down that x-axis. I don't even need to go the other direction. I mean, I can. But you can see 10 is really far down there, right? And then because it's saying more than 10, I'm going to have a greater than symbol. Let me scooch this up a little bit. Right? So if I'm going to have that greater than symbol, you can start to feel out that I'm not going to shade much area under this curve. Right, There's just not that much to the right. But technically speaking, if I'm going greater than 10, I'm going from 10 to infinity, mean standard deviation. And you see that number is so small because it's actually in scientific notation. Right, This should um, sorry, this is 1.53e to the negative 6. When you see that e to the negative 6 on your calculator, that's like saying 10 to the negative 6. And you can see, like, it's practically, I mean, this is basically 0 because there is no area under this curve. All right, so numerically, this number, I should say, is matching up with this, this area I shaded. So that looks pretty consistent. I'm happy with that. And then part E is saying 70% of children spend at least how long of the day, or how long per day unsupervised. So the thing that you have to hear in there is that it says at least. At least is like saying greater than or equal to, right? So we want to actually look not for the 70th percentile, but we want 70 the top 70%. So if you ever want the top 70%, that's great, but our calculator isn't built in tops. It's built in on down or bottoms or cumulative relative frequencies or really percentiles. So the cutoff for the top 70% is the 30th percentile. So I'm putting in my inverse norm of 30% there, mean standard deviation, tack on some units, and we're good to go. All right. Thanks so much, everyone. Bye.